Welcome to this exciting program for Porter to Ascension and Soul Search. And I want to thank Neil Gar and Tanjila Islam for allowing us to present here today because I have some very interesting guests, especially in terms of Ascension. My name is Alan Steinfeld. I'm the author of this book, Making Contact, which has a chapter by my good friends and guests here, doctors JJ and Desiree Hurtock. And today's theme is really about ascension because there's nobody I feel in my experience who knows more about the transformation of consciousness in the body than Dr. JJ Hurtock based on his book, Keys of Enoch and Desiree Hurtock, who's been with that book for, I would have to say it's okay, 50 years. Is that okay? <laughs> That's right. Close but to it. Okay. <laughs> they are students and I guess masters in a sense, more than anyone else about ascension. I have my own definitions, but JJ, how would you define ascension? Ascension in the historic sense of most of the great philosophers and mystics is the ability to leave one's present physical dimension and enter into another dimension through which superluminal or high energy events are recorded mentally and brought back to the common folk or the situation of life as on a day-to-day -day basis. But when people think about ascension, they think about where they're going to go. And I think the important thing is, you know, we've been told that there's heaven, earth, or hell. And those are your choices, right? Three-story universe. That's about it. But uh, in terms of Dr. Hurtak, who had a unique experience in 1973, he saw that there are many levels of ascension. And I think that's really, really important so that everyone's just not trying to get to the same space. And if they don't make it, you know, they're out. So there's, well, you know, different realities that they can go to. And that's why you're also called new realities. Right, exactly. But I have to ask the obvious question because some people say ascension is just a one-time thing. And JJ did have an ascension experience, but yet he's still here in physical form. So what is it? Is it a one-time thing? Is it a progression? How would you talk about it, JJ? It's a multi-dimensional opening to your true self, the human being as a non-local multidimensional being of life comes to the fore and we recognize not only can we open one door of a portal of the mind but we can open multiple portals right and you know his experience uh brought to this planet the book called the book of knowledge the keys of enoch and his connection was with enoch and it's somewhat similar because enoch was literally taken into the higher realms saw different realities also went through multiple stages of those realities, which I think is important to note that he came back and wrote about, and then he was taken again by God. So this ability of ascension and descension, in fact, if you listen to the Bible, the ladder of Jacob, we always think is a ladder of ascension, but the very first thing that Jacob talks about is that the angels were seen descending as well. So it's interesting the fact that there is this kind of going up, going down. When we talk Descending and ascending. Right, and we also say it's a vortex energy or portal to ascension. I was examined by Dr. Andre Puhari to work with US military in the intelligence community because in my return into the physical dimension, there was a residual light around my body. And some of you who have followed our research over the last several decades note that there were several events post-ascension events where there was superluminal energies around my body when I was singing or intoning ancient Hebrew Aramaic mantras, which I believe is the missing piece to the ascension process. There, there is a linguistic code system that is able to operate within gravitational waves. And through the energies of a higher physics of consciousness, one can, should we say, go beyond the normal laws of gravity and physical construction. And if you don't do it in the body, you can also do it in the mind. And I think that's also important. Dr. Hurtak, actually his body was gone for two days. So he did it in the body, but many people can do different levels of ascension through the power of the mind. We read about the ancient Kabbalists also who could leave their body and float and levitate and then come back into their physical body. Well, you hear about Tibetans developing the rainbow body and you hear about the Toltecs burning from a fire within. It's a subject I really study. But what's happening now, and Deborah Juicy talks about this in her Ascension Tips, is that there's a wave. We're at a higher vibration 
uh, just in physicality than we were maybe even a hundred years ago. So talk about this wave ascension where collectively we can all raise this frequency together. Right. Well, I want to start also with Elizabeth Sotora, who's a mutual friend of all of us. And she sees it like a piano keyboard, like we're working on one frequency. All we have to do is shift our mind. And in some cases, go what we believe that Christ did, actually. He took matter and made it back into light. Just like scientists are looking at taking light and how does light make matter, he did matter became light. And these are all possibilities. We don't poo-poo any of this stuff. We think it's real. So you just need to change the frequencies. You do it a lot with the power of consciousness. The consciousness mind has to be able to be there first, has to be able to work on these other levels of ascension. And then you can change the frequency of the body if needed and when it's needed. Do we state that both mind as, as well as matter come out of consciousness? And now we're beginning to realize not only through consciousness, which is the essence of everything interconnected, there are higher states of consciousness. And this is the key to a new physics that has been studied for more than 40 years by scientists working with Stanford Research Institute in Northern California and other think tanks to sh show humanity that there is a scientific validation of higher states of consciousness, which open a portal literally to ascension or to other dimensions allowing an individual to acquire higher information or uncommon information and bring it back into the sensory system. So this well, is- I also want to add that there's a biological, a biophysical component to ascension because when you do reach those states of enlightened, awakened consciousness, and we've talked about this on other shows, there's a biophotonic potential that starts to be activated within the cells. Our cells are capable of admitting light. And that's, of course, you met the man of light, but that's what it comes when you change consciousness, you change the physiology. That's well said. Russian scientists, the Kirlians, noted back in the 1960s when they separated the leaf or tore leaf apart, there was a bioplasma after effect that they could register uh, on a film document. This work was also carried on by my late colleague, Dr. Marcel Vogel of IBM, who recognized that there is a state we don't see, but we can measure under photoduplication, whereby there is an aura or there is a corona discharge that takes place not only on the leaf of a plant, but certain individuals in higher states of meditation can raise their consciousness and go into a luminous state. Right, and so what you were referring to as well, Alan, was Mauricio Panace, who was a healer from Brazil. And uh, he had a light experience first is what really initiated him into this. But he was known to be able to put his hands out and you literally could see light. And they photographed this many times coming out of his hands. And it was really a lot of power and a lot of energy that he was able to literally produce by his body. But we believe that the whole body itself, and this is why we are, feel this is really interesting, came from a higher vibratory frequency. We work with the a well noted uh, also scientist from Russia, Peter Garayev, and he felt that even the DNA came from a light wave frequency that then concretized into the third dimensional reality. And when it did, of course, then we stopped using that ability, but we still have it all within us, which means even the reason why our ribs are a certain number, everything uh, looks a certain way, is all because we came from this light vibratory frequency that became matter. And now for ascension, we simply need to realize we have the potential to go back into that light vibratory frequency, again, by the power of the mind or by the body. And preferably, of course, in the last moments of our life when we're done with our mission on this planet and not before that, I have to emphasize to all the young people who think they can get away with something earlier. There's a reason why we're all here right now. And it's really important. We've got almost 8 billion people on this planet coming for this time of not only individual ascension, but we believe consciousness ascension and ultimately energy ascension. So ascension is connected with the concept of compassion in service to the human race. Why go to the higher dimensions if you're simply going to come back into to the selfish ego? No, the mystics, right. the great minds who have had ascension, realize that there's more to the universe of intelligence. As we connect with the higher divine family, we bring back the attributes of a greater concept, of a greater 
picture or holistic picture of life through which we emerge as holistic beings. And one more thing, Alan, on this, I'd like to talk about Eben Alexander, who we all know, and we, in fact, sponsored a lecture with him years ago okay. uh, together. Um, he wrote a book called Proof of Heaven. And if people aren't familiar with it, I strongly suggest reading it because he was really a neurosurgeon, graduate of Harvard and the best you can be. And he had no concept of any of this stuff. And he had a disease where his mind literally went dead. And what he experienced in that was other levels of ascension. First of all, he saw some lady flying around him and guiding him. He didn't know who she was, but she was beautiful and he really loved her for some reason. And then he went to this other planet and he saw spheres, literally what we would consider like Merkabas or orbs, and they were sending down rays of energy. We believe that these are other realms he visited. And in that realm in particular, there were these energy orbs that were giving positive energy, positive solutions to the people living there. So he experienced different levels of seeing color phenomena. And the final level he went to, so he basically had two or three levels. Uh, you have to read his book. The final one was this one where there was literally a link and beauty of all consciousness brought together. So right. you know, and he was having these experience with no brain function. That was the miracle that he said, oh my God, how could I be experiencing if there's nothing going on? Which means that it's really the soul, it's really, the non-local consciousness that is the essence of who we are. And one quote in that book, Proof of Heaven, I think he quotes Edgar Cayce, where Edgar Cayce says, the big issue is not how much does consciousness survive the death of the body, it's how much does that vast consciousness survive the life of the body? Because where you're in form, you've narrowed your consciousness, you don't have to, to a kind of limited sphere. And who we really are, like you're saying, is infinite. One more point I want to make is like, yeah, a lot of people say they just want to send and get out of here. Well, I have to say they're not going anywhere, you know, because <laughs> they're coming back. Have, yeah, that's maybe right. a teacher Ramtha, who was in a, says he's an ascended master and maybe he is. He says everyone wants to ascend and no one wants to live. He says ascension comes from a life well lived. And we're here to do the best, to, to be our most optimum potential. And then because we've done the good work, like you two, you've dedicated your life to service. This is what happens when you've seen that other side, JJ. You came back and you said, I want to be a teacher. And you spread the word from what you've learned. And you've given both of you your life in service. That's a life well lived. And that's the prerequisite for ascension. Right. I just want to say a few other things. The one, that girl that Evan saw, he did not recognize her. And when he came back, yeah, he could have thought, well, some of these things were just in his head, but he was adopted and he finally found his real parents. And there on their mantle was the picture of this girl. It happened to be his sister. He never had seen her in his entire life, but she was there to help him. You go to Danian Brinkley, another near-death experiencer, he came back. The one thing what he was asked when he went to the other side, because he had died through lightning strikes and things like that, what did you do in this life? That was what they asked you. The first thing they asked him, what did you do? And you do have a life review, not only of yourself from your perspective, but what other people saw of your of of you from their perspective. That's very important because you think, oh, I'm on top of it. And, you know, I can do anything to this guy and who cares? But, you know, right. you see that right. from that other pers perspective. So as your book is entitled Making Contact, we must make contact with our higher consciousness first. And Desiree, in a, another book, Over Self Awakening, have illustrated many of these contact stories, as you can see here by the beautiful illustrations of realizing mm -hmm. that we must work with sacred geometry a uh, higher vibratory acoustical physics, and an understanding of a spiritual dynamic, which is called in, in poetic language, the divine spark, in which we bring together the missing pieces of life and orchestrate this within a greater picture of human evolution, connected ultimately with the higher evolution of the spiritual teachers and masters. So this gets into our teaching, the over self awakening. And what this book is, is 72 levels of consciousness awakening. And in terms of, uh, we'll say, 
incarnation and reincarnation, which we've been alluding to, we don't think that the soul is just here. And then when you die for whatever reason, you know, you either go to sleep for seven years and then you find a new body, blah, blah, blah. We don't agree with the reincarnation. We believe that there's a higher self that is connected with you. That's constantly trying to feed you information to help you to be in service to for the reason you're here. And when you pass away, you go back into that overself and that overself itself is evolving. And then it finds another place where you need to be or it needs to be for its own evolutionary soul growth. Right. And so it's a whole different right? um, I just want to bring in one point, especially if we're talking about ascension, but I don't mean to put it in a religious context, but we do have a snapshot, a photograph of an ascending body. If you look at the Shroud of Torin, that is the body turning into light. It's been documented and it's, it's the potential all of us have that perhaps Yeshua, Jesus, whoever he was, did this and it's recorded on linen. So do you have anything to say about the- actual well, I carry with me, Alan, a picture of the three-dimensional aspect of the cloth of Turin examined by my colleague, my late colleague, Dr. Don Lin of Jet Propulsion Lab, which was a branch of Caltech in Southern California. Right. After many years, a type of technology was developed of, of image enhancement, bringing out what is called a three-dimensional picture of the Christ face. This would be impossible if the picture was just painted on the linen. No, if there was a uh, homogeneous display of light to a type of sublimation process through which the Christ figure entered into a higher state of weightlessness and what would be called historic ascension. So we've seen the cloth in person, so to speak, twice. It only opens about once every 10 years. And uh, we truly believe that it is the image of Christ. So what it was was a cloth that was placed over the body of Christ in the tomb. And basically it was had nothing on it at all, supposedly just, you know, the the weave that it had. It, it was a flax cloth, not a cotton. This has caused some confusion to the scientist ultimately, but it was a flax well, linen. linen. That's what linen. people flax were buried linen. in that time. But they're still in religious. I think my father was covered in a linen cloth. It's yeah. traditional. Yeah. So yeah, it's a flaxy linen. And basically then as that image changed from matter into light and Many scientists have said this really could only have been done through a type of almost like an X-ray experience where the body that was matter became the body that was light. And then it impressed upon the linen that image. And really, it shows many, many things like not that there was a nail through the, uh, we'll say the palm of the hand, but it was through the wrist. And then scientists have looked at this to say, yeah, you know, you couldn't have held up the body by the palm. It would just have gone right out. It had to be through the wrist, which is a bone that could hold. But it represents the potential we have. And I just want to say in my belief that he wasn't the Christ, he was a Christ and the Christ consciousness is what all of us have potential of reaching. We are all potential Christs and Yeshua, Jesus was one that maybe achieved it through service, through higher consciousness. By be, I think he was a, a human that became this divine being, but that's our destiny. All of right. us. And when we talk about the over self awakening, we actually say, in addition to our own over self, the over self ultimately becomes part of a Christed over self. So we actually become blessed Christed. So exactly what you're saying as well. Although we do say that Christ came from a higher reality into this incarnation, but we realize yeah. everyone has their own preferences on that. But nevertheless, it was very yeah. powerful. I'm pulling up a cosmogram or cosmic picture of Christ. Uh, a figure known as Metatron and Melchizedek from this book, The Over Self Awakening, as I personally experienced them when I was taken into the higher dimensions. So, my theology, my anthropology, my science was changed dramatically in realizing that there are higher masters that have transcended the historic state but have kept, as it were, the aspect of the human vision as well as the cosmic perspective of teaching that they represent. 
So let's also right. talk about the masters that have ascended. In your book, Alan, as you're pointing out there of mm -hmm. making contact, we talk about three forms of intelligence that, and this is just really a summation of forms. Uh, one is the extraterrestrial, which are yes. also coming to this planet and perhaps taking some people with them uh, on a short journey from time to time. The next is the extra celestials, which are beings like us that have incarnated on this planet. Very but, energy form. But have ascended to a certain state and are still growing and learning. But most of them have started on this planet or starting in this in this local universe, because we believe many uh, spheres are inhabited by those who are also evolving in this local universe. And then we talk about the ultra terrestrials. And these are beings that did not originate from this planet, but that are coming still yet to this planet to help us to understand higher consciousness. Because as they come and as we are open to higher understanding, the wisdom and knowledge pours forth because really there's no separation. If we understand that our mind can function beyond this third slash fourth dimensional reality, all information is available to us, not just remote viewing on this planet, which has been proven, yeah, remote no, viewing to the stars that Ingo Swan has seen. He actually, uh, had, yeah. But a library of the more. universe. I agree with you both. I agree with you what you just said, Desiree, because as we become more light essence, as we evolve our consciousness, we tap into a greater field of knowing and the ascension becomes just an effect of this greater mind of knowing. And you know, ascension, it was not just Jesus was maybe the last of the, I would say, modern uh, ascensionists, but there's a there's a history in Egypt. There's a history, like I said, in Tibet, but even the Taoist immortals. And there's little known uh, cases of ascension in India. There's a guy named Ramalinga, who in Pondicherry, there's a little square was where he stood when he turned his body into light. So if you do the research, there's lots of ascension. I mean, Rantha said ascension is actually easier than we think. We, it, it is a form of taking your body into the unseen realm. So it's ascension, but also descension coming back into yeah. human service. That's important. Ascension is the offertory for higher work of descension into new worlds, new universes where one is a way short of light. And I wanted to tell our audience that there is a scientific document i'm holding up mind dynamics in space and time which is the real x files of all the top secret work that was done at stanford research institute a remote viewing in the 1970s the and 80s that included the opening process of the higher psyche to experience other relative states of creation and creativity uh, so for the scientific skeptics in the audience please be aware that this book is the anthology of about the upper 2% of scientists themselves who were skeptical, who went into higher states of consciousness or non-locality. And again, for the Western tradition, the historical tradition, there was Enoch, but there was also Elijah. And Elijah, of course, went in a type of what we would consider a Merkava energy, not necessarily an extraterrestrial, but a Merkava. And the difference is a Merkava can actually change into other dimensional realms, like beyond just the third, fourth, or fifth reality. Fourth dimension for most uh, scientists is time. So the fifth is just the next level. The Merkava can not only go, what Dr. Hertex showed was 24 dimensions, but can actually cross out of this consciousness time zone that we exist in into greater realms. And so course, this is so important because everybody's uh, giving the hype of UFOs. No, UFOs are not connected in my language with the ascension process. It's the higher vibratory Merkava or spiritual vehicle spoken of the ancient sutras of the great master teachers, the maha avatars, those who had the ability to transport themselves between dimensions without the physical metallurgy or hardware of physical spaceships. I mean, this is a misdemeanor. Unfortunately, they are tricking people into a physical context when we're talking about a paraphysical context. And that doesn't mean extraterrestrials can't give us some level of information, but when we talk about higher levels of ascension, we're talking about really going through greater consciousness awakenings that are far beyond what many of the extraterrestrials really are functioning very similarly to our level of intelligence. So um, just maybe to they wrap have more up, let's information, just, but... Just to wrap up, Ken, let's talk about the wave because 
It's not, we are all connected consciously. The great thing about your book, Mind Dynamics, tells the power of remote viewing that we are non-local beings. That means we're also all connected. So what is happening now on the planet collectively? And like when we gather in places like Sedona, there's an increase in vibration. Talk about that a little bit. People are sharing a collective consciousness. People are sharing great artistic and scientific insights of the reality that there is a higher aspect of ourselves, we would call the over-self reality, the higher self that's been completely ignored by psychology, by the physical reductionistic science. People are beginning to realize there's a consciousness and a physics that combines higher states with human states through which we emerge as new beings. Ryan, you mentioned Sedona, and we believe that's one of the many portals to ascension that exist around the planet. But nevertheless, if you get yourself into a certain state of meditation and you ask for higher guidance, I mean, the Zen understanding of clearing your mind is one thing. And of course, you should clear your mind from this, you know, what am I having for dinner uh, scenario. But when you really understand and ask, mostly ask not just for yourself, but to ask for how you can help humanity. How can you fulfill your mission here on Earth? A whole transformation takes place and you become your own portal to ascension. You can do it from anywhere on the world, but you have to be willing to help others, to help the planet, and to help even the plants and animals, whatever your mission is. Everyone exactly. has So the bottom line is choose your friends who are interested in positive thinking, of raising their consciousness into a vehicle of consciousness service, because that's the key to opening the portal to ascension. Choose your friends who have unconditional love that associate with the higher vibratory, we will call it the transformational linguistics of being able to feed positive thoughts continually into all parts of the body through an acoustical or musical vibration through which we can maintain higher states no matter what the physical situation is. Yeah. And finally, understand that there is a divine process of life that connects us to a higher family of the cosmic cultures. Right. That we're all interconnected and, through the ability of having the divine image, what is called and, in the ancient and, Hebrew version of Genesis, the Beit Semenu Kinmutheno, the image and similitude feel the vibration to which we begin to associate post-human three-dimensional activity with the fifth dimension that we as a human race are currently beginning to enter into. And I want to say, if you want to know more about higher consciousness, the cosmology, please see our book, The Keys of Enoch at keysofenoch.org. Yeah. It talks about the greater realms that Dr. Hurtek experienced. It talks about things past, present, and future for our planet. I also want to say, as we gather, join us in um, San Diego in April when we gather at the actual Portal to Ascension live meeting where we'll come together and discuss these topics in greater detail, but we'll also gather because I think it's important to be there physically because there's a vibrational field. I mean, online stuff, what we're doing today is great, but when we gather together, when two or more are gathered, we increase the field through our intention. It's great to be non-local, but it's also great to be local. And we'll be localizing there in San Diego in April. And all of us. us. All of us, Ellen. The us. divine force loves us, and so do we. God loves us, and we spread this love in so many ways of going from the third dimension into the multi-dimensions of what the Christ called the house of many mansions. And don't wait for ascension. You can make it even happen today. Right. Ascension is waiting for you. So we're here, we're evolving, we're moving, and we're joined together with like minds to encourage this awakening that is right there. We're at the threshold of a new moment in time. And if you're watching this, you're part of it. Thanks so much for joining me, Alan Steinfeld, Doctors JJ and Desiree Hurtock get their book, Mind Dynamics, Over Soul Awakening, Keys of Enoch, Book of Knowledge, or is it Book of Knowledge, Keys of Enoch? And of course, my book, Making Contact. Thanks so much, Tangela, Neil, and everyone watching. We'll see you soon. And, and we're going through a planetary ascension, all of us together. Let's do it. Be, be there. And you <laughs> are. Okay. Bye. Thanks.